I suppose it should be I should be mentioning the uh, the sort of music that prevailed in the household at that time. We we always had a piano, um, and as I remember, uh, Sunday nights around the around the piano, sing songs. Who played the piano? I've got no idea. I think my father used to bash about and sing comic songs and uh, before that I should mention that we all uh, had piano lessons as teen in our early teens as I think all most kids um, at our social level dare I say social level uh, had was the Pickering family arriving uh, from South Australia uh, and this was Tom Pickering, the son, who was virtually the same age as me, form a friendship which uh, was just normal, um, you know, playing backyard cricket and kicking a football around and that sort of thing. The next stimulus, I suppose you'd have to call it, was the ABC, uh, the wireless, then uh, was in its in its infancy. It was probably early, an early form of free, free jazz. We honestly didn't know what we were doing, but out of the, out of the mists of, out of the chaos, um, we gradually found that we could um, play tunes and of course we looked to the um, jazz repertoire such as it was. And of course we played them over and over again. We knew um, Louis Armstrong's solos by heart, Benny Goodman's solos by heart. Uh, it stimulated me, I think, to uh, forget the, my piano playing and, uh, and look for the obvious instrument which uh, uh, turned out to be the... Well, uh, I wanted to play a brass instrument turned out to be a cornet which I bought from a second hand shop for the price of seven shillings. <laughs> it seems amazing now. Our first gig as I remember it, um, where we probably got a five shillings or something, I think we did, we, we called it a professional gig in, in, with hindsight. It was playing for a birthday party for a friend of ours, the Barrel House Four. How, why did we call it the Barrel House Four? And it was one of Jess Stacey's uh, compositions called, called Barrel House. Um, I don't think we even knew what a barrel house was in <laughs> those days. I should say we, both Tom and I, uh, took uh, some lessons uh, so as we could learn to read music because reading was a great advantage. Um, although not all uh, heroes, the jazz players, read music at all. Hello, I'm Judy Tierney. Ahead on the program, still tickling the ivories at 80. I'm conscious of trying to produce something worthwhile, even if it only lasts uh, three minutes, you know. Musicians often struggle for an audience, let alone a regular gig. Bands come and go, tastes and venues change. But more than 60 years after his first public performances in Hobart, jazz pianist Ian Pearce is still as popular as ever. The excitement of, of uh, improvising and, you know, clarinets going and trumpets blowing. It was as a teenager listening to the big band sounds of Louis Armstrong and Benny Goodman that Ian Pearce first became hooked on jazz. Pearce and his friends cobbled together a band of their own and played the party and pub circuit around Hobart. It was the beginning of a lifelong love affair. The sounds aren't new anymore. During 60 years, he's played the jazz standards hundreds of times, with the famous and not so famous but Pierce is still hooked. And I can speak for the rest of the, the group when we are asked to play, say that as an example, um, you try to do, give it a fresh uh, 
approach each time, and that's a challenge to your improvisation, your imagination. And uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'll play that every day if, if people want it, but it'd come out of my uh, musical nature to uh, turn it around and twist it around and do odd things. Might, might ruin it in the process, but then might lift it to another level. That's the attraction of jazz. I don't think any other music has the same element. And there's no shortage of requests. In fact, the booking sheet for the Ian Pierce Quartet would be the envy of many full-time musicians. In the week before his 80th birthday, he'll play two concerts and a friend's party. As a jazz player, in terms of your craft, are you still learning? Yes, I think I am. I, I sort of, if I'm, if I sit down here and feel I need to practice, you know, uh, um, technique, you know, loosen up the fingers a bit, uh, and I usually try a few new things or different combinations. I like to make sure I, I know musically what's what. Uh, I'm conscious of trying to produce something worthwhile, even if it only lasts uh, three minutes. And we have a very, very special guest with us on this tour, a man who has been involved in jazz in Australia since the, the early 40s. In fact, he, he spent some time in, Ili in England. He played with Mick Mulligan's band and... Uh, all sorts of other bits and pieces over there, and he eventually joined Graham Bell's Australian jazz band playing trombone, and he recorded with them in 1949, and he's an absolute jazz icon for Australia, Ian Pearce on the hey! piano. Hey, 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 hey. We're very proud to have him with us. Keep practicing, Michael. Oh, very soon, thanks very much. Well, the next number we're going to play is a good old Dixieland <laughs> Number, isn't it? Or is it one of the top of the pops Something like this that. year? It's called That's a Plenty.
where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet, so is she. Bye, bye, blackbird. No one here can love or understand me. Oh, what hard luck stories they all had me. Make my bed and light the light. I'll be home late tonight, blackbird. Bye bye, blackbird.